Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, following the video that uh, I did at Salts Mill, walking around taking pictures with my uh, infrared camera, I've had uh, questions asked uh, on YouTube and uh, private messages how I edit my uh, infrared files. So that's what I'm going to do in this video and show you how I do it. Now, a disclaimer uh, here, I'm no expert when it comes to uh, Photoshop, and Lightroom, etc. When I'm working in Photoshop, I don't work with big stack layers. I like to keep things simple. Uh, so, you know, if there are people out there that see me do certain things and think, why is he doing that? At the end of the day, it's just the way I work. And, uh, you know, we're only uh, trying to create a picture. And uh, if I edit a picture and it looks okay to me, <laughs> that's good enough. So, there's a, a few things that I just want to show you before I show you the editing process. And it's how I set my... Uh, my digital camera up. It's this one. I think you've, you've probably uh, seen it in the video. If you haven't watched it, just check it out. It's the Olympus EPL1. It's a camera that uh, has been um, converted to shoot infrared. And um, just show you a few settings that uh, I select on this camera just to uh, make sure that I get uh, better quality uh, infrared pictures and uh, infrared pictures that are easier to work with. So we'll take a, a look at that now and then move on and, and I'll show you show you how I edit the pictures. So this is the camera that I uh, use to shoot the pictures uh, in infrared at Salts Mill. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, it's in my latest upload, so check that out. Now this is a, a dedicated infrared camera. It's, a, it's an Olympus EPL-1 compact camera that's been converted uh, to shoot uh, infrared at 720nm. That's uh, nanometers, that's how the wavelength is measured. You can get lower wavelengths, you can get higher wavelengths, but I quite like the 720. Now, the advantage of having a, a camera that's been converted is that basically you just use it like any other camera. Uh, you're going to get uh, normal hand-holdable shutter speeds, um, if you want to uh, slow the shutter speeds down and get blur in the pictures like you do sometimes see in infrared pictures you, with this camera just like a normal camera you can put an ND filter on now if you're going to use what you call your normal camera that's not converted I would highly recommend that you use a, um, a mirrorless camera it's going to be a lot easier to preview the image uh, on the LCD screen at the back and uh, also um, using those type of cameras because you have to put this deep red r72 filter on the front to get the infrared effect you're going to get um, you're going to run into long exposures and the camera will always uh, need to be used on a tripod using a dedicated one like this uh, the shutter speeds remain normal and you can handle all this uh, most of the time so the thing what i want to show you on this camera is a couple of settings on the back before you go out and take pictures and uh, they're going to make the pictures easier to work with and uh, you, you probably get better quality pictures as well so I'll show you the two things that I do and then we'll look at the editing process right uh, there's a few settings that I would recommend uh, before you go out and shoot with your infrared camera I actually said there's two that I set on this camera but there's, uh, there's three and I'll show you those now uh, the first thing that I set is uh, a custom white balance I wouldn't use auto white balance uh, because you're not going to get uh, a really nice uh, a preview when you fetch them into your editing software they'll probably end up being all red uh, which makes it a little hard to pre-visualise the picture and to assess it uh, so to stop that happening uh, your camera's probably different to this but I go into the menu to the custom or the white balance uh, tab press OK and the cam my camera's telling me to capture the white balance the custom one just press the info button so I'll probably point that at uh, some uh, brightly lit grass that's in the sun or it could be a, a piece of white card just fill it fill the frame with it and uh, set that as your white balance and um, that way it'll stop you getting this uh, funny red look to the images um, so that's the first thing the next thing is when you're using the camera always work with your histogram now as you can see in this picture here the, the histogram is stacked more to the left of the shadow side uh, so the whites and the foliage uh, are not going to be as white as what they could be. So I, I always work with the, with the histogram using the exposure compensation. So on this camera, as I, get, as I said, it'll be different than yours, but uh, I'll access that by pressing that tab there. And then if you watch the histogram, as I increase the exposure, 
it moves the histogram more to the right and that's where I want it to be. Not too far, I don't want it to blow, but it, that way it will give me the, the best whites in the foliage etc. Uh, and also I'll get this nice contrast between the whites and, and any dark darker subjects within the picture. So that's the second thing I would highly recommend. And the other one, and I'm sure you'll be able to do it in your, uh, in your cameras, is to go back to your menu and I have my camera set to monotone. Uh, that means when I'm previewing the image, I'm not getting any fully funny uh, colours fr from the actual preview itself. Uh, it just looks monotone and again it makes it easier for me to uh, pre-visualise the image. So that's the three settings that I would recommend that, uh, th that you set. The ISO, it doesn't really matter. The, sometimes if you set a really, uh, you know, say a high ISO, you'll introduce uh, uh, noise in the picture which sometimes can look good for infrared. Some of the older uh, films, infrared films were very grainy. Uh, or you could add grain in post-processing, but that's entirely up to you. So the ISO is set as a preference and on the lighting conditions that you're going out in. So we'll move on now and I'll show you how I uh, edit the uh, infrared pictures. So I just want to go into a little bit more detail about the settings that I set on my infrared camera before I, uh, I actually go out and take pictures with it. Uh, so let's first of all look a little bit deeper into the white balance uh, and why it's important to get that right. Now you can see in this picture it's got uh, an overall red cast that doesn't look very nice and that's caused by using the camera in what they call auto white balance. Now if it wasn't an infrared camera normally auto white balance works 95% of the time it gives you a good neutral image but when you use it with an infrared camera, whether it's a, um, a dedicated one like mine that's been converted or a, a digital camera that's not been converted where you put the R72 filter on the front to get the infrared effect. If you use it in auto white balance, you're going to get this red effect. Now, it's not a, a massive problem if you forget to uh, set a custom balance when, you, when you're using your infrared camera. As you can see, uh, I've I pulled this... Um, a file into a camera raw and I'm just going to disregard the red effect on it and, and, and simply desaturate the image and work from there. So you know you're not ruining your images if you're shooting in auto white balance. The problem is that is when you're previewing the images. When you're shooting this way and you take a picture and you're getting a preview that's red it's very difficult to try and judge that picture. The infrared effect the tones in it so the best way is to set a custom white balance. Like I showed you previously, uh, set your camera so you take a custom white balance for some bright grass that's in sunlight or a piece of white card that's in sunlight, uh, fill in the frame and use that custom white balance when you take the pictures. And when you do that, the red effect goes like in this. And as you can see, this is a lot more neutral image. It's a lot easier to judge this image uh, when you're previewing it. Uh, it's got a little bit of colour in the image and that's why I set the camera to preview in monotone. Now it's gone completely black and white and it just means that uh, I can, when I'm looking at the pictures that I take, it's a lot easier to, to judge them. And I think by doing, getting that, the white balance correct, it, it enables you to take better pictures because you're getting a better preview of the picture that you're taking. So that's, uh, that's the importance of getting the uh, white balance correct. Always set a custom white balance. Right, we'll move on now to the other setting that I set on the camera, uh, working with the histogram and why that's also very important. So I normally use my uh, infrared camera in aperture priority mode, uh, using the exposure compensation dial to adjust the exposure. And uh, most of the time I will adjust the histogram so it goes more to the right hand side careful not to blow the whites in the picture but just push it further to the right and that in turn gives a stronger infrared effect and it also if you've got darker subjects within the picture you get this nice contrast. So using the histogram can have a, a really nice effect on the images but you have to be careful how you use it. Now in this picture um, of the, the holly bush it wasn't in uh, full uh, sun so the tones without adjustment looked a little bit flat. So by using the histogram and pushing it to the right, I get a stronger infrared look to the image. Now that 
in turn affects other tones within the picture, as we can see in this. Uh, the main part of the image is the tree, the hawthorn tree, uh, but that again uh, that uh, is looking a little bit dull because it's not in the full sun, so we don't get that uh, in full impact of the infrared. Uh, so by pushing the histogram to the right, it just increases the uh, effect of the infrared on that uh, hawthorn tree, but it has an adverse effect on the actual sky by uh, b basically losing tones in it because we're making it brighter when it was bright in the first place. So you have to make a decision what's important in the picture and edit to that most important part. Now obviously you can um, take uh, two pictures and bracket those, put those two pictures, one for the sky and one for the tree together in Photoshop, but uh, I think if you can get the, the important part of the picture uh, correct, you will get uh, quite a strong visual image, S such as this one that I took at Salts Mill. Now, what was important to me uh, in this picture was the church itself. I wasn't too bothered about the sky. I needed that detail in the in the church. So I used the ex exposure compensation to give me that detail I wanted. And I think it's worked quite well in, in this picture. So it's all about your own vision and how you want the picture, uh, the final uh, picture to look like. But the histogram is a very uh, useful tool for increasing the uh, overall effects of the infrared image. Uh, but it has to be used, as I said, with care. So let's uh, move on now and I'll show you uh, how I edit my uh, infrared pictures. Right, finally, the editing process. Now, if you follow some of the tips that I showed you about setting the infrared camera up, uh, using the um, white balance to get a, a better preview of the image, it makes it easier for composition, and also using the histogram uh, to try and get the exposure uh, as good as you can. Uh, doing those uh, two things, um, you know, helps you create better files to work with, and uh, they become very easy uh, to edit. Uh, that applies to all photography, even normal uh, digital photography or uh, film photography. Get the exposure uh, correct and you're halfway there. So let's move on now and I'll show you how, I'm, how I edit the pictures. They're from the uh, salts mill images that I took in the last video. And I'm going to show you two uh, slightly different techniques. So let's uh, have a look how I edit them. Right, I'll show you the first picture I'm going to edit and that's one I took. Uh, in, in Salts Mill with the uh, infrared camera and it's a picture of a, a barge on the canal and I've opened that up because it's a raw file into uh, the uh, uh, camera raw in Photoshop and as you can see it's got this brown tinge uh, but it's a lot better uh, looking at that than uh, looking at a red file it makes it a lot easier to uh, assess the image I quite like it with this tone on it actually uh, and if you want to do, you can mess about with these, the temperature, the tint, the vibrance, the saturation, just to give a, a different look. Uh, but it would be obviously in a colour image. But we're dealing with uh, infrared in, in black and white. So uh, what I normally do is desaturate the image and then open that into Photoshop. Make sure that I'm in um, RGB colour. And the first thing I need to check is the levels. So I copy the layer. And we go to the Levels command. And then uh, pressing Alt on the keyboard. This is a, a Windows computer. Uh, click on the triangle at the shadow side and pull it along until we can see the black's clipping. And then pull it back until the black disappears and it shows that it's not clipping. That's that. And then again, pressing Alt and on the highlight side, click on that. I've no adjustment on that whatsoever. I'll just leave it as it is. It's not blown, so I'll just leave that and press OK. So that's the level adjustment. The reason that it's a lot brighter at the top than at the bottom is because I use the exposure compensation to give me more exposure in the foreground because that's the main part of the picture. Uh, and I knew that uh, if I got that right, the light tones on the bards that the infrared has given will contrast nice with the, the black uh, water on the canal. So that's the levels adjustment, layer flatten. And then the, the only other adjustment I'm going to do, or only other two, is first of all use um, curves adjustment to get more contrast uh, in the image and make that water, water darker. So I'm just going to put an S curve 
on the image and I've got that nice dark water now you can see that if I pick the preview off not a massive change but it's enough to make a difference then press OK add a layer mask because I don't want to to make the sky any brighter or more contrasty uh, press all add a layer mask and then just paint in that dark area using the brush tool and might just put a bit more contrast into those leaves at the side but not the sky area it's bright enough is that and then layer flatten the image and then the last uh, adjustment again I'll copy the layer I'll go to uh, camera raw and then use a linear gradient just to bring some more tone into that sky area so pick the linear gradient pull it down round about there and then just bring down that sky a little bit I don't want too much just to put some tone there click OK again add a layer mask and then just paint in that sky area probably use a soft brush and then layer flatten and save the image and that's as simple as it is to edit that uh, this type this picture uh, it's a picture that um, doesn't didn't require a lot of editing because I got the exposure um, near enough correct but the next picture I'm going to edit I'll show you a slightly different technique uh, where I, I want to fetch out more detail in the image so we'll move on to that one now so this is the second edit slightly more complex but still very easy to do and uh, the picture is another one from salts mill uh, it's a plant pot behind a window just open it to camera raw you see we've got this tint again I'll do what I did in the first edit desaturate and then open the image into Photoshop make sure that the image is in uh, RGB the first thing I want to do with this uh, is to just straighten it it looks a little bit uh, as though it's leaning to the left I don't mind the the conversion verticals the camera's pointing up it's the uh, tilt that I don't like so I'll correct that by going to select all edit and I'll do this by eye so it visually looks right that'll do click OK and deselect and then I'm going to crop the image uh, I'll do it 5 by 7 and um, this is a, a second chance you can get at your composition if you got it uh, slightly wrong uh, when you took the picture bring it down a little bit there and we'll let it go at that crop that and then same as before go to levels command just to check see if they're okay pressing alt and then moving the slider until the blacks are clipping then pull it back until they stop clipping like right there check the whites no adjustment there and, and again it's because I use the histogram to set the exposure so I've got some really nice light white tones in the image but they're not blowing so with that done uh, again it's uh, lay flat and then go to a curves just to make the blacks a little bit deeper like I did in the previous edit and just use an S curve pull the blacks down and then a little bit more contrast press OK to that and uh, flatten the image and the difference between the previous edit and this one is that I'm going to go to the Nick collection and go to Silver Effects Pro and just add some uh, structure to fetch more detail out of the picture especially in the uh, class so just make a structure just look not too heavy just a touch Uh, click brush uh, 
and then just painting that effect and you can see how it's bringing the detail out more in the glass itself probably do it across there just keep away from the whites and then lay flatten and that's another picture edited so you can see that the the uh, editing um, apply then uh, then flatten um, you can see that the uh, the the editing worked for for both images just slightly different using the structure in the second image but uh, I think what you need to be picking up from this is that getting the exposure right is the key to it and in both images I got the uh, highlights spot on I just want that brightness from the the whites that the infrared creates and then in post bringing those blacks down to get this nice contrast. So that's uh, how I edit my pictures. Uh, I do them all the same way. I don't uh, always use structure just for certain images. So right, we'll move on now and just have a little talk about the best types of images that I think uh, are suited to uh, infrared photography. Right, before we move on to the next part of the video, it's a uh, print sale time. Now it's just a way of me trying to create uh, funds uh, to help support the channel, it helps me buy materials etc and helps me keep creating this content. And you know every print that I've put on eBay for auction has sold and I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's bought those prints, it really does help. But not only that, the thought that uh, the uh, prints that I've created uh, from my local area, I don't travel very far, uh, uh, to think that those prints are hanging on walls from as far as Japan, Australia, Europe, United States, the UK. It just gives me a, a great feeling of uh, satisfaction. So, you know, thank you for everybody who's uh, supported the channel. So let's take a look at the print that I'm putting up for sale now and uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. So this is the actual print that's going on eBay for auction. It was taken with the uh, camera in this video, the Olympus EPL-1 infrared camera. And it's a picture of a, a small little tiny cottage in the Yorkshire Dales. I particularly like this picture because of the dramatic look that the infrared has uh, given. It's not too pronounced. We've got this dramatic sky it's created. And then we've got the, uh, the white grass and the white on the trees where the sun is glancing them. But it's not overpowering. And it re really makes a stunning print. The print seems to radiate light. Uh, even in a darker situation, if it was uh, hung in a darker area, it seems to radiate that light. I'm particularly pleased with the lighting and the way the print has turned out because it's just given that feel of the atmosphere when I actually took this picture. Now, it's printed uh, with a delicate warm tone on one of Epson's best papers, I think, and that's Epson uh, Hot Press Bright Paper. It's a smooth matte paper. Uh, but it does produce some uh, beautiful tones. The image size is uh, 12 inches high by 16 inches long. It'll come uh, titled, I entitle it The Cottage, and it'll come signed at the right hand side. It'll also uh, come with a white border all around the image and that will help you when you come to uh, mount and frame the picture. So if you're interested uh, in purchasing this print, go to the link below in the description to the eBay auction and put a bid in. Uh, it really does help uh, to support the channel. So we'll move on now uh, to the next part of the video which is some suggestions of uh, what images you could take with your infrared camera. Now over the years I've seen a lot of pictures that uh, people have taken using their uh, digital infrared cameras, using infrared film and that there are some beautiful pictures out there. But on the other side of the coin there are pictures that uh, people have gone a little bit overboard with the infrared effect and creating images that are, are way too much uh, white within the image and, and, and relying on that, that uh, whiteness uh, to create a picture when actually there's not a lot really to see in the picture and hold the uh, viewer's attention. So I think when you use your uh, infrared camera, try and think of, think of it as a, a normal camera uh, where you would see a scene with your normal camera you say you like that and take that picture do that the same with the uh, infrared camera but look for that dramatic uh, effect so 
in this first picture, it's a landscape that I took in the Yorkshire Dales. And what uh, drew my eye to it was the effect that the infrared on the, had on the actual sky. It created this really uh, dramatic sky. And uh, that con contrasts lovely with the, the white, the white gra grass and the tree to the left-hand side. And then we've got this white cottage that contrasts uh, with the, uh, the dark sky. So, you know, this is a picture that you probably would have taken with a normal camera, but using infrared creates a much more dramatic look. So this uh, next image is one that, uh, again, you would probably take uh, with a normal camera, but the infrared gives a different effect. But you can see it is infrared by the white foliage and the, the fact that you probably know that the, the actual uh, telephone kiosk uh, would have been like a, a post office red well the infrared has lightened that but it just creates a more interesting picture of what you might call a normal subject so look out for uh, iconic things within the picture but also a hint and a suggestion of infrared now these next three images show the importance of uh, capturing dark uh, subjects that are not affected too much by the infrared um, and uh, had that uh, that contrast and that depth to the images. This first one is, uh, I don't worry, it is some sort of a cog wheel uh, that uh, contrasts beautifully with the, uh, the white foliage in the background that infrared has created. And it just creates this uh, depth to the image and gives this lovely shape. This next image is just uh, two pillars with a gate that, again, not really affected by the infrared, but we've got this path leading away to these uh, trees that are in infrared and then this next one of the church uh, that I've been there many times at Stainburn um, again we've got this uh, dramatic frontal lighting it's casting these shadows onto the footpath the, the wooden gates are not really affected by the infrared so we get this nice contrast against the light background so again it's those three pictures are pictures that you would have taken with your normal camera but infrared gives a more dramatic effect now this uh, next picture, uh, I took this uh, in a wood where there wasn't uh, too much sun and this is where you, you don't really need sunlight for infrared, it can create this lovely ethereal look and I think this picture just gives that look. It's got this, uh, this darker trunk uh, giving this lovely shape and then we've got these different uh, tones of grey. They're not white but they just create that ethereal look. This next picture of the uh, ferns, again taken in lower light because the light wasn't that strong it, it's had a nice uh, grayish tones to the ferns and created this lovely pattern and it just goes to show that infrared can create a normal looking picture and give some uh, really beautiful tones this uh, next picture taken in a wood again we've got these uh, conifers in the background in the sun they've gone really bright and it created this lovely texture set against these tree trunks that are not affected by the infrared and it's just giving this abstract pattern. Uh, the next one again we've got the tree trunks dark pushing your eye to the centre and then we've got the tops of the ferns and it gives this lovely textural quality. And this final image is just a, a froth what you might call white foam on, on, a, on a, a river and uh, I just photographed knowing that the white foam would stay white but the water would turn uh, really, really dark, nearly black, and it just gives this beautiful graphic look. Don't uh, always be thinking of including a lot of uh, white foliage in the picture. It can be overpowering. Uh, get normal su uh, subjects within the picture with a hint of the infrared, and you'll come up with some really dramatic photos. So I hope these pictures have helped you to think maybe a little bit different when you're going out with your infrared camera. Right, that is the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's taken out the mystery of infrared digital photography, especially for people who are new to it. Uh, as I said in the opening uh, part of the video, I'm not uh, uh, one of these person that uh, uh, works in Photoshop with stack layers, etc. I like to keep things uh, simple. It's uh, a lot easier when you get older and uh, to convert the infrared digital files to get them to black and white it's not a complicated uh, process at all it's not rocket science and if you follow the the things that i've done um and shown you uh, you will start to produce some really nice infrared images i know there's people out there that are probably ex more more experts at, at doing what i've done but uh, 
I just say at the end of the day it's the picture that counts and uh, you know if you look at that picture and you're happy with it then that's all that matters so you know uh, don't get too bogged down with the technicalities and the other thing that uh, I'd like to say is don't listen to uh, us uh, what you might call uh, film purists I, I'm a film user most of the time 95% of the time but uh, don't um, be put off by those, those that say that uh, uh, digital infrared is, is not is not proper infrared photography only film can do it and that's a, a really uh, ridiculous statement really uh, it, digital infrared cameras especially when they're converted can take some beautiful infrared images they're all there to see on the internet uh, yes uh, film did film uh, shooting film to create these infrared images it was uh, a really beautiful way of doing it you got this grain and texture in the picture um, they had this glow to, and look to them but it didn't come without its uh, problems uh, you know that the focusing uh, could be shifted it was a bit tricky sometimes to get the focus and if you didn't like the heavy grain then uh, it wouldn't be a film for you but uh, uh, don't compare uh, digital as I say uh, infrared and film it's a totally different thing I mean I would say that uh, being a film user I do like to see grain uh, in an image um, they can be a little bit clean the infrared files but uh, it's only because we've seen the, the other types uh, uh, other ways of uh, creating infrared images from film but it will be as I say it's, it's just wrong to compare it it's a clean a quick way of getting infrared images out of your digital camera and uh, I don't see anything wrong in it so so don't be put off by uh, purists um, at the end of the video I did show you some pictures now it wasn't uh, sort of saying that these are the sort of pictures that you should take all I was trying to point out was that that, 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 that sometimes when people get into infrared they get blown away with the, 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 the look of the picture and you know it's a wow factor at first and they tend to include too much uh, within the picture where there's too much whiteness in it overall whiteness and and, and it's difficult sometimes to try and uh, to find where you're, you're supposed to be looking in the picture they can look really really busy especially if the skies go black and you've lots of fluffy clouding and you've got all this white in the picture all I was trying to point out was try and look for what you might call normal photographs and photograph them with the infrared camera and I think the pictures you'll find in time as you get used to it will become a, a lot more interesting and more uh, artwork than, uh, than than just purely taking a picture of a landscape with lots of trees in it etc and all this white in the picture it, as I say it can be overpowering so it was just a, a suggestion and I hope uh, showing those pictures has, has given you some ideas right if you enjoyed the video please give me a, a thumbs up a like uh, subscribe to my channel uh, if you have any questions about infrared photography, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, as I always say, stay safe and I will see you all in the next video.